Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and this is your Wednesday, June 17th stimulus check update for the second stimulus check and also we're going to be touching briefly on the first stimulus check as well because yes, unfortunately there are still millions of you guys out there that haven't received your first stimulus payment so I don't want to move on completely to the second stimulus check until every last one of you guys gets paid on your first stimulus payment. So as far as the first stimulus payment goes, like I mentioned, millions of people are still waiting so they're going to be continuing to send out checks and also the prepaid debit cards. But in the meantime, there's also gonna be a lot of direct deposits sent out as well. And I did mention in my last video, the next trending date is actually today. So if you haven't checked your bank account yet, I would strongly encourage you to do so. You may see a payment there. And if you do not see a payment there, then in the meantime, just continue checking the payment portal. You will eventually receive a date. Remember, you're definitely eligible and they're gonna be sending out these checks every single week in batches and waves. So you will receive a date through the payment portal as long as you're not being claimed as a dependent by someone else on their tax return. And as long as you don't owe something like past due child support that could potentially offset your stimulus payment. And remember, as long as you don't make more than $99,000 as a single file, or more than $198,000 as a married filer, then you're definitely eligible, so just hang in there. And finally, one other resource that you could call, you could actually call the IRS at their EIP hotline. That number is 1-800-919-9835. You can actually speak to a live IRS agent. Many people have mentioned that they are usually on hold for at least a couple of hours, and usually the IRS agents aren't incredibly helpful. So I would probably just advise you just to continue checking the payment portal unless you had the extra time to actually call out and reach to them, but you probably won't find out a whole lot of more useful information. All right, so at this point in time, I do want to move on to the second stimulus check and breaking news from the White House today. I mentioned in yesterday's video that Trump was pushing for $2 trillion in stimulus money, whereas Mitch McConnell, who is the Senate Speaker, was looking at $1 trillion at most, which there is a pretty big gap there between Nancy Pelosi and the House of Representatives, where they were seeking $3 trillion with their HEROES Act. And then we had Mitch McConnell over here saying, okay, maybe we'll spend $1 trillion at most. So you had a $2 trillion gap there. And then yesterday, of course, we had Donald Trump. It was mentioned that he was pushing for $2 trillion. So at this point, we kind of have a happy medium here. And at $2 trillion, it would be fairly easy to squeeze additional stimulus payments in there. So it was good news. The CARES Act, for example, was $2.2 trillion, and we received stimulus payments. So I would think with a $2 trillion stimulus plan, we could easily squeeze out additional stimulus payments to the American people. Now, of course, like I mentioned, Trump did want $2 trillion, which was $1 trillion more than what Mitch McConnell was pushing for. So we were wondering, where is this extra $1 trillion coming from? And it actually came out that the Trump administration is preparing a $1 trillion infrastructure plan. So according to the Bloomberg, a preliminary version being prepared by the Department of Transportation would reserve most of the money for traditional infrastructure work like roads and bridges, but it would also set aside funds for 5G wireless infrastructure and rural broadband, the people said. President Donald Trump is scheduled to discuss rural broadband access at a White House event on Thursday. So fixing our roads and bridges are great. I know in Florida, at least where I live, the roads can be absolutely terrible in some place. So obviously devoting some funds to infrastructure is very important. I can definitely get on board with that. And rural broadband, that's also a great thing. I know there's people who live in such rural areas where they're not even able to connect to the internet. However, while these are all great things, and I think we can all agree with how important they may be, you have to hope that there's still going to be enough room in there for stimulus payments. Okay, so let's take, for example, the next stimulus bill ends up being $2 trillion. So if we devote $1 trillion of the $2 trillion towards infrastructure, that'll take up half the bill in infrastructure alone, which will only leave $1 trillion left over for stimulus payments and any additional fluff they want to add into the bill. However, you really have to think that we will receive additional stimulus payments, and this is why. So in order for a bill to become a law, it would need to pass the House of Representatives and then pass the Senate and then finally be signed by the president before it becomes a law. So just because Donald Trump comes out and says he wants one thing, or Mitch McConnell comes out and says he wants another thing, or Nancy Pelosi comes out and says she wants a complete other thing, it really doesn't matter because all these bills, in order for them to become a law, they need to pass the House of Representatives, the Senate, and then finally be approved 
through by the president. All these bills, for the most part, need to be bipartisan, so it must be something that the Republicans and the Democrats both agree on, enough for it to pass the House, the Senate, and then be finally signed by the president for it to become a law. Now, at the moment, the House of Representatives is currently ruled by Democrats. They have Democrat majority. And the most important thing to them at the moment is sending out additional stimulus payments to the people. So no bill is going to pass here unless it includes additional stimulus payments. So if President Donald Trump wants to pass his $1 trillion infrastructure plan, he'll need to also include those stimulus payments in order for it to be bipartisan and for it to work. So the Democrats and the Republicans may work together. And actually, infrastructure is something that's already pre-bipartisan that the Democrats and the Republicans both agree that needs to be done. However, the Democrats were looking more at like 500 billion versus 1 trillion. So perhaps maybe they'll meet in the middle at 750 billion, which will leave more than enough room for stimulus payments. Again, this is only speculation on my part. Nothing has actually been passed. But you have to think that with the Democrats ruling the House of Representatives and the fact that the Democrats are not going to pass a bill unless it includes additional stimulus payments, you have to think that the chances of us receiving additional stimulus payments would be very strong when you just factor all that in. Also, if you haven't already, I would strongly encourage you to call this number and speak with your state representatives and your state senators. That number, and I'll leave it up on the screen, is 202-224-3121. By calling that number, you can leave a message, you can let your voice be heard, and yeah, your demands may not be met. They may not do everything that you want them to do. But remember, we put these folks into office. We voted them into office. That's what democracy is. So we can vote people into office if they're doing a good job or if we think that they're going to do a good job for us. And if the people that we voted into office aren't doing a good enough job, then we can vote someone else into office who we think can do a better job for us. And also remember that elected officials at the local and state level are also very important. Voting for the president isn't the only important person you can vote for. It's also very important to study up and vote for your local and state officials as well. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna move on to answer some of the comments and questions that I received in my previous video. And if you have additional comments or questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them in the next video. So the first comment of today's video comes from Charlie. Charlie says, hey Josh, it's Charlie. Question. If the second stimulus payment goes through, will that include veterans getting a stimulus payment as well? All right, Charlie, thank you so much for that question. So for the first stimulus payment in the CARES Act, veterans were included. So I would have to think in the second stimulus payment, veterans should be included as well. I'm not sure why they wouldn't be. I would think that it would be very similar to the CARES Act. However, since the second stimulus payment hasn't actually passed yet, I can't say for sure which groups will be included and which groups won't be included. I would have to think that it would be very similar to the CARES Act. And I'm not sure right now whether or not dependents will get paid. I know in the HEROES Act that was passed by the House of Representatives and the Democrats, they made it so dependents would also receive $1,200 stimulus payments, but that would require a lot more stimulus aid going towards payments to the people and I'm not sure with just $1 trillion left to play with if there will be enough left in there for stimulus payments to both people and also to dependents as well. But to answer your question here in a much shorter fashion, yes, veterans I would think would definitely be eligible for stimulus payments if another stimulus bill does end up passing. All right, so the final question of today's video comes from Kimberly. Kimberly says, Hi Josh, I have been using the payment portal, but it keeps on saying payment not available. I have been waiting for so long, even at one point I had received an email saying I did not have to do anything. I am on SSDI and I also called the phone number and then finally got through and talked to a woman to explain why I was calling. The woman who I was talking to was really talking really low and at a distance, and when I asked the woman to speak a little louder, she just hung up on me. I am so tired of waiting and waiting. All right, Kimberly, thank you so much for that comment, and I'm so sorry that you had such a difficult and hard experience calling that number. And if anyone does want to call that number, that number is 1-800-919-9835. That is the IRS EIP hotline, where you're supposed to be able to call the IRS and ask them questions, and they're supposed to be super helpful. But from everything that I've heard, they're really not that helpful. So. If you really want the best information, I would just go to the IRS Q&A website where they have some of the common questions, or you can just continue checking the payment portal and you will eventually receive a date. Remember, Kimberly, you are definitely eligible for a stimulus payment as long as you're not being claimed as a dependent by someone else on their tax return, and as long as you don't have something like past due child support that could potentially offset your stimulus payment. So in the meantime, I'm so sorry once again you had such a difficult experience, and I'm so sorry that you're having to wait such a long period of time for your stimulus payment. I know it's frustrating, I know it's stressful, and it's awful having to wait for such a long period of time, but hang in there, you definitely will receive a payment. 
Okay, so to wrap up this video for today, I wanted to finish this video off by talking about the virus cases, and I wanted to hear from you guys and your personal experiences. I see everything on the news, media related, to seeing how there's a spike in like 21 or 22 states. And while that's pretty obvious, governments are loosening restrictions on businesses. We're able to go back out to restaurants, theme parks are opening up. We're able to kind of return to normal life for the most part, but of course, a return to normalcy also means that we're interacting with people once again. And of course, with any interactions of people, the chances of us getting sick or this virus spreading will also increase as well. So it really doesn't come at much of a surprise. You also see that testing is up as well. We have more widespread testing, which is great, but we're also seeing hospitalizations is also up. So that's no good either. Here in Florida, we actually have an all time high as far as cases go. And it's interesting because when all this started, New York was super high in cases. And originally our governor down here in Florida wanted to keep people who were from New York out of the state of Florida, just because he was like, hey, there's such a high infection rate up in New York and we're doing pretty well down here in Florida. So we want to keep people in New York up there and away from the risk of them taking the virus down to Florida and potentially spreading and making Florida kind of like a new hotspot. Now, at this point in time, New York is actually kind of setting the bar for being like really good as far as reacting to the virus. Now they're at a pretty much a low case for, as far as their state goes from what I understand. And since now we are at kind of like at a higher case down here in Florida, now I think New York health officials are kind of wanting Governor Andrew Cuomo keeping Floridians out of the state of New York. So it's kind of interesting how the tides have kind of turned and now it's kind of different where New York is kind of doing really well as far as keeping the virus under control, whereas down in Florida we're seeing kind of higher new cases. And I, I think that can be kind of representative with Florida opening up for business much quicker than New York did. So we'll just have to see how everything unfolds. I know originally they're talking about as we were going into summer, this should kill off some of the virus with some of the warmer weather. So we'll just have to hope that the warmer weather kills off the virus, but we will just have to wait and see. Again, guys, in the comment section below, let me know what state you currently live in and let me know what your perspective is as an individual. I see every day on the news how current states are doing, but I'm not really able to see on an individual's perspective. So I'm very interested to see where you're living, how your state's reopening process is, and what your current perspective is as an individual. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Remember, if you haven't yet received your first stimulus payment, hang in there, try not to drive yourself too crazy, continue checking the payment portal every single day. You will eventually receive a date. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, feel free to do so. I would greatly appreciate it. It's completely free to do so, and it's a great way to support my channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys, and I hope you have a great day today.